Okay. Um, I'm John Leung. I'm a principal engineer at, at Intel. I also am um, on the OCP incubation committee, and I am the liaison to hardware management uh, project. And lastly, I also uh, I am a member of the DMTF, from which uh, which owns Redfish. So, if you have any Redfish questions, I can go answer that. So my main talk is on profiles, and so um, in order to talk about profiles, I'll give you a fairly good idea of what they are and then why they're so important to, to OCP. Um, it, what OCP profiles do is they specify the requirements of what an implementation of um, an OCP management interface needs to support. So the vision is that from this OCP profile, which you write in JSON, you can actually uh, run a conformance test against it, send the pass fail to, to OCP, and OCP would grant you an accepted, uh, OCP accepted sticker. And this is the vision uh, sometime later in the future once, once the OCP profiles get, gets put in place. So it is, uh, contains all the requirements. Uh, it's, a, um, uh, it's a manageability interface, uh, um, which specifies requirements on top of Redfish uh, resources and properties. And it's um, using a Redfish profile format, which can be used either by OCP, by any, any other organization that wants to um, impose requirements on a Redfish implementation. Okay. And then conformance is done by a, a, a set of open source tools that uh, the DMTF provides in order to consume the profile and then auto-generate the, the tests and conformance tests to run against any uh, compliant implementation. So that was the vision that we brought to um, OCP, and in March of this year at OCP Summit, um, we, we, the OCP announced that that was the direction they wanted to go in, and so um, they approved uh, both the um, diagram on, on the right and the uh, baseline, um, which came out. So from the diagram on the right, um, the hardware management uh, project uh, would create a baseline, and this would be a baseline set of requirements for manageability. Uh, which would um, be required by all OCP platforms. So whether you're compute, storage, or network, um, you would support this baseline. And in each of the projects themselves, the server project, the storage project, could extend above that. That they would say you you have to satisfy the baseline, and then you can because you're a storage platform. These are additional management uh, requirements that you would have to have. And I'll have a slide later on about how far that's uh, how, how much progress has been made since the uh, March March announcement. And we've structured it so that oh, and, and so in addition to that, we also did the first example was we went off and did servers. So there's a server profile which which exists, which is the extension of the baseline. Um, and I'll, and that's the focus of this slide is to talk exactly about how that profiles are structured. Uh, we're still getting feedback from people about where to set the uh, bar as to where the baseline should be. You set it too high, no one, no one, no one satisfies it, and everyone walks away. You set it too low, everyone jumps over and says, you know, we're done. So um, um, there's had a lot of discussion trying to figure out what the baseline is and then trying to figure out what the server should be. So uh, the baseline, I believe, is released, and the servers are still, I think, doing the final discussions about what they need. Okay. Yeah, so, um, so this is kind of reviewing some of the projects that are in flight. So server project, um, um, uh, I should have just written the URI, but um, on the um, uh, hardware management project uh, specs, there's the, both the baseline and the server, which is being reviewed. It's at uh, version 0.2 at this point. Uh, the storage project is very interested in creating their, their own profile, and they've just trying to get the people in place to go off and do that. Uh, Rack and Power, uh, there's very active work in there, in there. I believe there's actually a, uh, yeah, there's a schedule on the, on the next slide about what they had announced in the July timeframe on how fast they want to get something out. Um, what they, when they first called me, um, they asked me where the profiles were, where the schema was for Redfish, and I told them, and, and uh, about two weeks later, they came back and said, it's all here. It's all been described. What do you want us to do? I said, you, you got to write a profile which says, uh, DMTF tries to describe everything, but uh, we don't want everyone to implement everything. 
uh, only a prescriptive power like OCP should be able to tell people what to go do because you guys, OCP will appear on an RFP, right? And people want the RFP, want to be OCP accepted, therefore they want to comply with the profile. So you guys get to cherry pick whatever's in that schema and decide what people need to implement in order to be uh, compliant with a rack and power uh, profile. So they like that idea because basically I gave them a pen and said, go do something. Um, so uh, this was their schedule as of July. Um, it's now October and I do not believe they're released yet. So, so it was quite ambitious for them to go do this. Um, I don't know if, I don't know where they're stuck in. Uh, but what I, what I have found is um, in, during this summit, I've gone to uh, the presentations of most of the other projects and all of them uh, mentioned Redfish in some form or another. So they definitely got the memo that they have to go write themselves a profile. Um, if, if, if either they just adopt the baseline and say that's all you need to fulfill, or they have to go um, extend it and, and uh, add additional requirements beyond that. Any questions? Okay, so with that, I'm going to do a quick dive into Redfish itself. I, I know that um, a lot of people just don't know what Redfish is, they've heard it. Um, and um, they hear it in a lot of, <laughs> I've heard it in a lot of the uh, project discussions and they just say DMT of Redfish, uh, but you're not finished. Uh, that just means that you've now signed up to go write yourself a profile and, and drive, drive the rest of it because just, just saying your uh, um, DMT of Redfish is going to be a requirement doesn't tell you anything. Uh, from an implementation standpoint, you don't know what to implement because there's no quote set of requirements. Okay, so it's a, so it's a, it's a RESTful interface. There are no new technology here. It's HTTP, it's JSON, it's, it's Python, um, and it uses all the existing protocols. Basically, what we what the data centers came to DMTFs and said was, uh, but you guys, there are all these nice management infrastructure interface uh, standards. Uh, they all require you to learn something new, and that means that we as a data center need to take one of our guys either train them to go learn all that stuff or we have to go find someone who knows that stuff and hire them. And the problem is training anyone is that they see it as a pretty much of a dead end for this career because now they're the only person in the company that understands this stuff and um, they're kind of stuck. So, so we have a better idea. Uh, why don't you use our existing technologies, HTTP, JSON, and go build yourself a manageability model at the end of that thing because then we can take our existing people off our line, go have them do that for three to six months, and then when they're done, they can come back and do the main line. They, they, can, they can go do it quickly, and then get back and, and give us back into production, okay? So we took that to heart. So we, we, we read the uh, uh, RESTful manuals, and we said, we're gonna go off and go do this, okay? So um, in addition to that, uh, we've created an entire tool chain um, it's not in this slide, but if I have time, I'll show you the tool chain that we have where we've open sourced everything in the tool chain. Um, so not only can people who are doing servers, but storage, and anybody else who wants to do manageability within their uh, domain of expertise can go ahead, take Breadfish, extend it, and then use the tool chain um, to, to enable uh, their particular management domain. Um, in addition, I'll, I'll talk about this on the other slide, is that it has a, we also released the schema as part of the interface, which means you can find a Redfish interface, you can grab, you can read all its schema, and you know exactly what that interface should do. So you can introspect it, and you can, in some cases, auto-generate the client side, so you don't have to, uh, to um, um, a priori understand what the interface does, and then code to it. Okay. Um, and then we have models, we created models for compute storage network facilities. I'll talk about in that next slide um, that we, we as the DMTF um, only did storage and we let these um, um, domain experts in the other standards bodies extend that to the, the um, domain expertise. So what you end up is with is a very approachable interface. Uh, you can walk up to any browser, uh, launch Postman, start issuing commands. Um, getting JSON packets back, interpreting the JSON and getting what you want. So um, this, this is purely a way to get serial numbers. As an example, you can do your get, you write a little Python, and, and, and out comes your output. And what this allows is that you don't have to read a manual. The JSON coming back is, is name value pairs. And we made the name value pairs uh, simple enough for you to understand there are not a whole lot of acronyms 
Um, we, we tried to make it so that anyone who grabbed, uh, looked at the JSON file could, could easily interpret exactly what it meant. So um, Redfish gets confused because there's actually two pieces of Redfish. Redfish is an interface. It's an interface which, which uses and defines this HTTP, JSON, URL um, a pathway. And then um, it also is a schema. And the schema is, OK, now we know how to talk to some em management endpoint. What exactly are we going to talk about? Uh, what uh, messages, when I do a get for a processor, what are the name, name value pairs I can get back? OK, so it's very much like when you get an XML file. You really like an XS, XSL file to describe exactly what that XML is. And we do that via schema. So our first schema was JSON, JSON schema, uh, very popular. Um, lots of, there's a big tool chain that consumes JSON schema files and can auto-generate cl client code and do all sorts of wonderful things with it. Uh, the problem with a JSON schema is it's not a standard. It's owned by one person and can change at any time. And, and we did not want to build Redfish, a standard, on top of a non-standard. So we had to go hunt around and find ourselves a standard. We ended up with, uh, at Oasis, uh, they had um, um, OData CSDL, which was in its fourth version and you know, fully a standard. So we built Redfish on top of, of uh, OData CSDL. And then we auto-generate all the other schema. So. Um, once we've, once we've locked down what the schema should be and we're ready for a release, we auto-generate the JSON schema. And then more recently, uh, about two weeks ago, uh, we, we released the um, Open API or Swagger schema. And this was in reaction to uh, actually a lot of telco and networking who said, you know, if you do it in, in Swagger, there's a, there's a code cogen um, capability of generating code in what, 20 or 30 languages, um, depending on what what the um, interface was. So this would greatly enable the ability to write clients uh, because all we had to do was grab the uh, open API uh, schema. Okay, and so what we did was, um, so that was, that was the structure of the interface itself. And then um, the, the DM tail went and focused on platforms and compute servers and, and what type of models were, were um, necessary for that. And then we went to other organizations which we'll talk about. And so uh, this is a typical JSON response. It's a lot of, lot of text, don't have to worry about it. You just have to worry about the groupings. And the groupings are, uh, JSON's a bunch of name value pairs. So we have simple properties, which are simple name value pairs. We have complex properties, which are structures of name value pairs. So if it's BIOS, then the under structure is name value pairs associated with BIOS. And then there are oh, complex properties. And then the subordinate resources. Subordinate resources are any resource that exists when the primary resource exists. So if it's a computer system, um, when the computer system is, exists, the processor, the memory, uh, the NICs all exist. And the minute you delete the computer system, all subordinate resources disappear. Okay? And then there are, are associated resources, and those are resources that exist independent of whether the primary resource exists or not. Uh, the managers, which um, may still exist even though you blew away your computer system. The chassis still exists even though you blew away your computer system. So um, those exist. And then last is actions. So not only can you get this thing, right, and get a bunch of name value pairs and properties, you can actually act on this thing. Because one of the primary things people want to do with any management interface is reboot the system. And so we created the, an action structure so you can actually do a post um, of an action and, and have the system interact with that. Okay, we did this because we wanted um, Redfish to be a, a true uh, hypertext model. So there are no resources that you cannot traverse to via some pathway. And so that's why we have all these um, OData ID paths is so you can get to every resource that exists within the model. And so there's no quote, a priori knowledge of special paths that exists um, that you need to know about. Questions? So uh, this is the compute model. So compute model has um, all the, uh, a bunch of uh, primary things yeah, on the side, uh, which is uh, off the root, which is slash redfish v1. You get tasks, you get sessions, you get the schema, you get uh, events. And this is the events are um, pub sub. So you can actually go in, subscribe to things, and, and it will generate the event for you. It has a bunch of registries. 
um, and then has three main categories. And one is chassis, which is a hierarchy of containment models of sheet metal. So you can use chassis to define everything from a, a, a blade to a tray to a rack to a row to a data center. Um, and then there is a managers, which is um, that which manages either a chassis or a computer system. And then last is a computer system. And the subordinate resources are within that. I've only listed a, a couple, which is processor, memory, and disk. So um, it, the um, text on the, uh, above it in the black tells you the path, pathway you would have to use in order to get to it. So if you want to get to processor two, it's purely Redfish V1 system, whatever system ID you want to use, processor, and then whatever processor ID you want to use. Okay. So um, by, by understanding this model, um, you can go and basically traverse the entire system and figure out uh, uh, all the name value pairs that you want. And so most of the work that the DMTF is off doing is saying, okay, fine, what is that JSON file that gets returned? And, and, and let's, let's standardize that. So when people get it, right, they know what type, of JSON, uh, what type of Python code needs to exist on the other side to go fetch the information they need to go fetch. Okay, uh, so you can separate these two actually in, into hardware, uh, platform hardware management, which is actually quite generic, uh, because even whether you're, whether you're compute or whether you're storage or whether you're an uh, Ethernet switch, uh, you probably have a manager and you probably have a chassis <laughs> you know, with sheet metal and power and, and, and thermal associated with it. So that model, these models can be reused for each um, individual uh, platform. Right. So, uh, so what is unique about servers was servers have we need computer systems, that what's we, what's we created, and then storage has uh, storage services, um, um, and network storage services. So they've extended it. But what storage did when they looked at this was they said we're going to reuse the bottom part because um, it shouldn't matter. It should all look the same. Um, we're not going to invent anything new, but we're going to create. We're going to. Uh, add, add additional storage uh, services on top of it, okay? And that's the same model we want to use throughout Redfish is if it's there, use it. If you don't like it, we'll help you change it, but add stuff which is new and different and, and people will understand that, okay? So this is the, um, uh, the current capabilities of the compute model that can be used by any other uh, 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 platform. So storage can use this if it's got firmware. So what's listed in uh, black is, is stuff that exists in prior management interfaces, and the stuff that's in red is stuff which is unique to what Redfish provides. Because if we, without the red stuff, right, you would tell people, good, you get, go from your old interface to your new interface, and you get no functionality. And people will say, why do I want to do that? It, you know, it's a bunch of work to get to the same place. So you have to... Uh, figure out what type of functionality you want in, in the red area to get people to go there. And so one of the biggest things we found was from our, uh, our BIOS and firmware update is that we want a singular way of updating all the firmware and BIOS on the system. And so there's one model to do that. And you can, you can use one model to fetch it all, revision, everything. And then there's one model to uh, 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 upload firmware. Um, whether that be a push model, and it comprehends both push models and pull models of, of firmware update. Okay. Um, serial, uh, serial console is interesting because uh, previously they ha the uh, management interface had its own uh, serial over LAN protocol, and we looked at that, and that has its own security issues, and, and we said there the exists one, it's called SSH. Why don't we just point to that? And so uh, we just provide you the semantics and, and the configuration to go uh, access the um, um, serial console of the manager itself system. Okay. Uh, um, uh, the, as mentioned, I think in a previous meeting, um, uh, one of the problems with the existing management interface was security. Um, so uh, we just said HTTPS. And once we say that, people understand it. <laughs> we don't have to explain it. Uh, we don't have to explain to security people why it's better than uh, a, a good security interface to go do. So it's, it's greatly reduced the amount of discussion about whether the interface is secure or not. And then last is, uh, oh, uh, composition. So um, right now with uh, this, this aggregation that 
uh, OCP has allowed to occur, um, you still need to compose a system. You need to look at that rack and say, out of all this stuff, I want to create a computer system that I can drop an OS on. And to do that, you need some type of composition request to say, I need a system. It's got to have this many CPUs and this much memory and so on and so forth. Um, and I need a structure in which to do that. So that's what the composition models allow you to do, is to make a composition request and have it come back and say, OK, I've created it. Here, it now appears on, on the computer system tree. Right? And you can go off and, and utilize it as you would uh, a physical system. So whether it's a, whether it's a physical system, which, whether it's a composed system, or in the future, whether it's a virtual machine, it all looks the same. It's, it, from, a user, uh, from a system admin point, if you don't want to know how it got instantiated, you don't, it, doesn't, it doesn't ever appear. Okay. So, so that was the model that we have for compute. And now um, uh, we want to go off and, and extend this model for elsewhere. Um, we had a long, uh, big uh, tool chain that we had now developed. And so we went to SNEA, and they did storage. So they're the ones that are, are trying to um, work with the storage project to uh, provide profiles for it. Um, networking was interesting because uh, networking is large, and they've been around a long time. Um, so what we uh, did was we went to IETF, and we said, you guys no, no networking better than anyone else. There's a great history of it. It's all encapsulated in Yang. So instead of inventing anything, we're going to take your Yang models and just auto-convert them into Redfish uh, models. Um, and, they, and someone in the back of the room said, uh, uh, RESTful, uh, Yang, uh, we already have that. It's called RESTConf. Why would you want to do this again? Um, and the co-chair stood up and said, yeah, we have RESTConf, but RESTConf leaves us stuck on the networking island. Redfish is trying to expand across the entire data center. So now Yang can participate in a much larger ecosystem as opposed to just doing networking. Okay? So that gives us compute storage and network. Uh, um, and, and part of the models within um, uh, Redfish is all telemetry. And when I went back to the data centers and I said, we have all this now, they said, well, you know, we now have all these IoT devices which we've thrown across the data center. You need to go manage that. So uh, a month ago, we announced an uh, alliance with uh, Pikmin, who wants to take Redfish into industrial IoT um, and, and use that same interface extended. Another area which you know, we know nothing about, DMTF knows nothing about, and we let the domain experts go figure out how to go do that. Uh, working with Broadband uh, Forum for, for Telco, and then for um, DSIM, which uh, the Rack and Power and the Data Center Facility guys are interested in. Um, we have an alliance partnership with both ASHRAE and the Green Grid to define the um, um, interfaces for power and thermal and crack units and so on and so forth, so forth that you can access via Redfish. And uh, we uh, shipped the uh, work in progress out in I think, March of this year, and we recently updated it because they wanted to add in all the uh, um, telemetry for, flu uh, for fluid flow. Uh, uh, liquid cooling, yeah, that's what you guys call it. Okay. So all this is in some um, um, state of uh, inception. So um, compute is out. Swordfish, the spec is out. They're still trying to get uh, OEMs rallied to, to, uh, to implement it. And then the rest are all in some form of, of uh, specification and draft. OK. OK, so now it takes us to conformance. So one part of this tool chain is the end part of the tool chain, which is um, I've, um, I've um, educated DMTF that they are a descriptive body. Their job in life is to describe as much of manageability as they can. Because if we describe it once, then when someone decides they want to power cycle a system, there's at least one model they can use. Because if there's no model, you get arbitrarily different ways of doing the same thing, which, is, which destroys interoperability. But we, do, we cannot prescribe. Um, prescription is a assertion of power. Um, and standards bodies don't have a lot of power. We've attempted to do that. Uh, but all our, quote, uh, standard collections never appear on an RFP. And so no one ever pays attention. Um, and I told them, you know, there are prescriptive powers in the world. OCP is one of them. Um, 
uh, ODCC from from um, in China who who owns Project Scorpio is another. Those are the only ones that can specify a requirement that anyone will pay attention to. Um, and I explained it to Bill Carter that you guys have an OCP accepted sticker. People want that because that's what appears on an RFP. So they're going to follow you guys and come back to, to Redfish because that's what, what uh, they want to go implement. So in order to do that, um, we have a profiles, which are generated by OCP. And then uh, the DMTF wrote this uh, Redfish interop validator. So the interop validator is a, is a very generic piece of code. And, and what it does is it reads a profile. And it auto generates all the tests against that profile. So if you say a resource needs to exist, or a property within that resource needs to exist, or that property needs to have a specific value, or there are dependencies about when that property needs to exist or not, that's all expressed in, in the profile itself. And so the interop validator understands all that and can go ahead and generate tests uh, against it. Okay. Yeah. So, so what we've defined with is uh, the interop validator is open source. And yeah, there's the path for it. And then all we need is profiles, right? So um, the hardware management project created the baseline profile, which I described in the earlier slide. And then uh, each project creates its own pro profile extended from, from hardware management. Okay. So um, this, is a, this is what a profile looks like. Um, the, the only reason I show it is, is it's fairly complex uh, as far as uh, JSON is concerned. Um, that's why within both the hardware and the server uh, project, um, I have reinterpreted that into, into a Word document that people readily can read and understand. So they could go and be, at least in, within hardware management and server, they reviewed and updated that, that document. And then I auto-translated it back to, to the um, profile because there's, I don't feel a need for people to actually understand all this stuff. You know, it's pretty arcane stuff uh, that, we've, uh, that the DMTF owns. So the DMTF has taken a position, right, is that the outward facing stuff that we give to end users and to developers should be as easy as possible. And all the complex stuff, like the old data CSDL and the profiles uh, should be owned by, 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 something into, by something DMTF does, right? we deal with the complexity. So it looks simple from the outside. Oh, yeah, half an hour. OK, so, um, so I'm going to go through the rest of these slides in fairly great uh, fast order. But this is the structure of the uh, profile itself. So the center here is the baseline. And it deals with chassis and managers and you know, whatever sessions and accounting services you need. So this is something that um, any uh, OCP platform should have. So the servers is over here on the far right side, left side, which is, oh, in that case, we have to go add systems. Uh, and systems have Ethernet interfaces. And they also have their specific logs for the system as opposed to uh, logs for the chassis, for the manager. And so the way the OCP profiles are structured is they have a reference mechanism, right? So, so the, the server profile can just reference the OCP uh, baseline profile, and you don't have to go reproduce a bunch of stuff. Fairly, fairly straightforward. And you can find this down at the bottom. Uh, this is uh, off the um, uh, hardware management wiki. Oh, this is the structure that um, I ended up uh, actually putting in the Word document <laughs> so they could review it, which is basically, uh, oops. It's all these are the same, so I'm just going to go through one of them and then, and then rocket through the rest of them. But basically, this is the entire um, uh, JSON file that gets returned. What is in bold is the stuff that's required. <laughs> so the, the people reviewing this can say, well, I want this thing here, right? And you guys haven't got it required. I want to make it required. And so this gives you the full namespace of where you could impose requirements. And then I take the um, stuff that's in bold and I shove it in a table. Because lots of people, that's how they review requirements. They look at the table to see if the stuff is required and desired. Okay, so this is this is generated artificially just so I can have a much quicker review cycle uh, with the project, so they could deal with a format they understood, as opposed to that that profile uh, JSON, which they would have to reinterpret. 
So um, when, when you look at the, the wiki, you'll see two Word documents, and that's exactly what they are, They're just interpretations of, of the profile. So this is, uh, yeah, so this is the baseline. So um, I, I go through each one of these. So this is the chassis resource and what is required, uh, serial number. Um, this is the power and thermal uh, resource, which is underneath the chassis. So a lot of stuff you can get. You know, I've only said I, I, want, a, I want power usage and I want power limits um, that are available. In, in, I think, a previous discussion just before lunch, there was a discussion about power limits um, being set. Um, and this is how you go off and do that, is that you just go set your limit in watts. Okay. Um, oh, so this is the extension off to uh, systems. Yeah, so I think there's one, yeah. So this is systems. So there's, again, lots of stuff in systems. Um, we don't want people to implement all of it. So the profile itself just highlights the, the bode and say these are the things you have to have because you don't have that. You don't have something which is manageable. So boot state, your boot path, um, uh, your processor summary, your memory summary. If you notice that, that one thing I can show you is that we've done Redfish in multiple revisions. And we started, when we started in phase one, it was just processor summary. <laughs> That's all we cared about. And then people said that wasn't sufficient. So now you have this processor um, group underneath it. And so you go to that processor group, you get a full explosion of every processor that's in there and all the detail about each individual processor. Uh, but we still retain processor summary because that's a quick, uh, high-level way of, of finding out what exactly is interested in. If you don't want the underlying complexity or understanding the complexity of all the processors underneath it. Okay, so, um, so next is is in that in that flow I had between uh, descriptive, prescriptive, and conformance testing, right in the middle was implementation. That's the hole we had to go fill. And that's what we filled in March was uh, we announced uh, uh, um, OpenBMC. And um, uh, we now have an implementation of Redfish running on top of OpenBMC. Okay. And, and the agreement is that that uh, initial um, uh, contribution will um, um, pass the server OCP profile. Um, so other is uh, go participate in your uh, various projects. Uh, make sure that they don't end with just a one-liner saying you're Redfish conformant. Um, we need a profile. And that profile statement can either be just satisfy the baseline. <laughs> we haven't got time to do anything else yet, and that, that's fine. But that gives people an idea of exactly what need to, they need to implement. And then uh, actually running it. So um, this is my how-to on, on running a profile is that you go set up a, a Python environment, you go download the, uh, the interface validator, which is written in Python, and then you download whatever uh, uh, a profile is out there, and you execute, and you point it, you point it to what, whatever uh, IP address you believe is conformant to, to that Redfish profile, and it will run, and it will dump out a log file, and then give you a pass or fail. So we've made it pretty, pretty uh, easy to go off and just do this execution. OK? I think I'm done. Yep, I'm done. Any questions? So the profile is not security? You just use a shared key between all, or probably collectors, just authorized from two procedures, basic out, or there's no standardization in that? Uh, right, well, right now, actually, there's a discussion because we just, the uh, DMTF just released a, a model. First, we need models, right? And then we can go worry about profiles because, right? So, the, so we have a certificate management model, which uh, got released, I think, two weeks ago uh, as work in progress because uh, DMTF also d d doesn't believe it it's, uh, knows whole much about security. So much rather say, here, here's our straw man, what we think it should be, get industry feedback, lock down the model, right? And then the industry can, can decide what profile it wants to impose against it. So are you thinking also in different levels of accesses or just one for some kind of data? Or 
Uh, so the current certificate is is to get access to uh, slash redfish v1 and get a get a. So they don't uh, no, no. Well, underneath it, there are roles, right? So there are management roles. Yeah. Okay, right. Yeah. So, so once you, once you get access, then you need to authenticate yourself as a, as a particular role. But the certificate management is merely to make sure that you can get a uh, secure, authenticated connection from your manager to your to your managed node. So point. Uh, yeah. Yes. And then the IDs of the, each element are you standardizing to start by zero or by one? Because it's common in. Oh, we oh oh. So, so the question is 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 enumeration, yeah. and how we enumerate. Uh, we don't enumerate. It, uh, the fact that we have ones and zeros in there is purely coincidental. You can put any string in there okay. at, at all. It can be UUID or, or right, right, right. As, as far as we went through the model and actually changed it from zero to and ones to something string-like because everyone thought it was integer, right? And yeah. we said it's not an integer, guys. It's anything you want want it to be. So, so we, we, don't, we avoid the decision about whether we start with zero or one. Okay. Anything else? Okay, then I am done, guys. <laughs>